Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Hi! Welcome to Those Two Chicks with, with the podcast. podcast. My name's Jordan. My name's Emma Grace. Uh, and we have a guest today. We do. <laughs> we have a special guest today. Say hi. Hi. It's Mother Mary. We need yes. a song. It's Mother Mary. Ooh. Yeah, there you go. That was really good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> we, we need to copyright that. We need to actually like record something like that. Yeah. And anytime she's on the podcast, we insert that. <laughs> That'd be really good. Um, oh, Ave Maria. What? Out. <laughs> Did you say Oven Maria? No, Ave Maria. Oven. Oh, like, Oven Maria. I was like, what's the, what are you talking about? No, Ave Maria. Okay. Yeah. Ave Maria. Oh, that was gorgeous. <laughs> so well. we're going to call this segment a monthly Mary a moment, moment. A Merry Moment. With Mary. With Mary. With, with Mother, Mother Mary. Mary. In a, have oh, yeah. Mother Mary's she, Merry Moment. She showed up in a moo moo. In a damn moo-moo. Mm-hmm. And you guys know what happens when you wear a moo-moo. You spontaneously combust. You combust. And you're going to take us down with... No, wait. It'll just be your feet left because everything else is yeah. fine in the room, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, good thing I have a good shoes on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that picture where there's just a the one foot and a little slippy shoe. Oh, that'd be perfect. Cute shoes. Her little glasses will be at the chair still. <laughs> oh. With your little leg hairs kind of singed at the end. Yeah. Curly. <laughs> Isn't this a nice moo-moo, though? Yeah. It is. It's yeah. perfect for going to a massage after you do a podcast. I feel yeah. you'd be very comfortable. It is. Okay. Anyway, so my well, mom's yeah. here, and hey, she's going to sit in for these next two episodes. Mm-hmm. All right. And today's a true crime day. It's a true crime day, and it's a, it's a sad one, like they usually are. Yeah. But I feel like yours are more interesting than the ones I've picked in the way of, like, they're really old mm. and, like, twisty, mm-hmm. and mine are just current and depressing <laughs> so but this one is solved okay well that um, makes so, it a little solved bit pretty better. quickly so there's no like mystery behind it really mm-hmm. um it's just depressing so i'm gonna be telling you about the oh wait this is so exciting okay we got our first listener email from someone we don't know <laughs> yes Not a friend of ours or family member Mm-mm. it is just a fan of the podcast yes which like we have those that's Apparently. That's awesome. Besides Mary here. Yeah. <laughs> they can't see you. Oh. So you just have to be, you have to make a noise more. Mary just did a beautiful face. Thank you. Okay. Oh, but Emma's going to read the email for us. Yes. So she said, Jordan and Emma Grace, first of all. Hi. <laughs> I love the I love how she typed it. Yeah. She says, I love the podcast. You ladies are hilarious. Although I thought about slapping each of you for talking about how you're so old. And then come to find out you're both younger than me. She's 27. Okay, listen. Still basically the same age as me. And people mm-hmm. who are like around my age, I don't feel like they're old. I just feel like I'm old. <laughs> I, don't know I just why. feel like I have bad genes. <laughs> yeah, I just see people around my age. I'm like, oh, you're not old. But then I get home and I'm like, Shh. so... Mm-hmm. You're not old, but I Um, old. But she'll let it slide. Okay, cool. She said, I live in Grand Rapids, and I love hearing all about the creepy stories in my home state, so I thought I'd share one with you. I grew up in Fremont, Michigan. My dad is a pastor at a small church. Are you kidding me? What are you laughing about, Mom? What? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> You're laughing at nothing? <laughs> okay. Okay. This is where I get it from. I know. <laughs> she looks just like... You okay? No. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just okay. laughing. I can't okay. look at Mary... I know, it's hard. Okay. <laughs> you laugh? Don't say you can't look at me. Okay. You guys, I can't laugh that hard. My lip hurts really bad. <laughs> you killed her. <laughs> So I'm going to start this paragraph over and hopefully we can get through it. All right, don't look at anybody. I grew up in Fremont, Michigan. My dad is a pastor at a small church, and despite all the jokes about being a preacher's kid, I actually loved growing up that way. But you certainly meet some interesting characters, and, to my delight, you always know everybody's business. 
Our church had an older organist, Louise, and her annoying granddaughter, Jenny, who was always tagging along with her. Jenny sang in the choir and attended youth group and Bible school with me. Jenny told our small group leader that a friend of hers was pregnant in high school. Jenny was appalled at her friend's poor choices and had vowed never to speak to her again. God bless my group leader who shut that down real quick and said something like, your pregnant friend probably needs your support more than ever right now. Woo! Yeah, seriously. (laughs) Anyway, Jenny and I lost touch until one day I came across a local news story and my jaw dropped. Jenny had apparently turned from her prudish ways and began dating an ex-con. In August of 2017, her boyfriend met up with a former friend of his from jail, possibly for a drug exchange. Something went wrong and Anthony ended up... Yes? Drug drug exchange. It was was a little hard for me to say. Yeah, it was. I had some excess saliva, sorry. <clears throat> Something went wrong and Anthony ended up shooting her friend with Jenny's gun in her car. Police believe that he then dismembered his body, cutting off the head and hands with a chainsaw. <coughs> he hid the body in the national forest near my hometown. This is my favorite part. I mean, it's sad, but... Okay. Yeah. But not very well, as it was found by duck hunters the next day. Why'd you have to say it like that? <laughs> but not very well. <laughs> I just feel like you go through all that trouble to dismember a body, which is hard hard work, I think. Yeah, with a chainsaw. And you just don't even hide it well. I mean, no. I mean, you made it easier to hide. <laughs> but those duck hunters found it the next day. <laughs> so Jenny testified that her boyfriend had come to her crying that night and said that a friend was missing and he was the last person to talk to him and he might get in trouble for it. Apparently, he wasn't too scared because he took the money he had stolen from his murdered friend and went on a shopping spree. He bought kickboxing equipment, sunglasses, a new cell phone, motorbike racing clothes the day after the murder. That's not even exciting stuff. No. No. He then tried to change his story, and he said that two black guys had shown up at the drug deal, and perhaps they were the ones to blame for the murder. Way to be racist. Exactly. He also said that they forced him to go on the shopping spree. Thankfully, I don't think the prosecution bought it. (laughs) And then she said, my husband and I went to my parents' home in Fremont last summer to meet my brother's new girlfriend for the first time. And as soon as we walked in the door, her husband said, so what's new? Any more dismemberings around here lately? She said, I married a good one. And I agree. Yes. (laughs) She said, thank you for the amazing pod and grow up, Jenny. Much love from Jordan. Yes, another Jordan spelled the best way. Woo! We're starting a Jordan club. Mm Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So thank you for that email. Yay, thank you, Jordan. We have too many Jordans. Way to make Jordan jackets. Maybe not. Can you make one for my Jordan as well? No, because he's mean to me. (laughs) He calls me the inferior Jordan, and I don't like it. So I have it in my phone as old loser Jordan, because he's a little older than me. But yeah, that was a really good email. And she has an article that she sent Mm -hmm. us to, and we'll post it. I'm actually thinking about doing a little TikTok on the case, maybe. Yeah. Or something like that. So we'll post about it so you guys can read it too. But thank you, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a True Crime Tuesday. Yes. So if you're new, I say this in literally every episode, Tuesdays are our serious days. The kind of sad day because it's our true crime. And Fridays are our more fun day. So if you're not ready for a Debbie Downer episode, you should probably skip this one and go to another one. Because I'm going to tell you guys about the Kalamazoo Uber shooter. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of recent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why are you guys making faces like that? Used to be the salesman at for our company. You're lying. No. Wait. Okay. Hold on. Tell the people this quick. Go ahead, Mary. Well, my husband owns Ted's Auto Body Shop, and the Uber driver used to be a salesman and sold auto parts. I can't believe that shit. Yes, yes. I did not even know. All right. Tell and me. Tell you about what he did. Okay. All right, guys. So we are going to start our story. Around 4 p.m. on February 20th, 2016, when a man named Matt Mellon requested an Uber ride to his friend's house. So the ride was pretty uneventful at first, but then the driver all of a sudden started to drive erratic. He ran stop signs, swiped other cars, and then just kept going and was going like 80 to 90 miles an hour in a residential area. And the dude was like, what the hell? Like, can you please stop? (laughs) Calm down. And the driver just ignored him. It was almost like he was just completely zoned out and he wasn't even aware of like what he was doing. He was just going. But finally, the driver did actually stop at a stop sign and Matt just jumped out of the vehicle. 
He just mm-hmm. rolled out. And someone else did see him jump out of the vehicle, and they ran up to him, helped him call 911, and he gave a description of the vehicle, a silver Chevy Equinox. Equinox? Equinox? Yeah. Okay. Equinox, <laughs> including the license plate number, because you have that from the Uber app. I think that's where he got it, or else he oh, took a picture of it. Yeah. But mm-hmm. he had the Uber app with the guy's name, like everything on it. And the the lady on the nine one one call. I wish I had the recordings, because she sounded a little rude. She was a little rude about it. Um. But basically, she like all they could do was put out a notification to watch for this. And I mean, little did they know that this driver, who they were just kind of nonchalant, like oh, it's whatever was about to kill six people in the next few hours. Mm. So let's talk about our little our little daredevil crazy driver here. Jason Brian Dalton was born on June 22nd, 1970. He was raised in Greenfield, Indiana, went to middle school and high school uh, nearby in Charlottesville. He then moved to Kalamazoo and, inten- and attended Comstock High School, graduating in 1989. He then went to attend a local community college in the area, graduated in 1992, and he was, oddly enough, trying to get into law enforcement. He had um, a degree in, I can't remember what it was, but it was something in the, the crime area. So he was trying to become a police officer, and he couldn't get a job anywhere with it that was, like, close. So he kind of just gave up on it. Um, and he did end up getting married to his wife named Carol, And he had two children that were both 10 and 15 at the time of this killing spree. And he was generally described as a nice guy and a good family man, though it was reported that he had been acting depressed in the days before the shooting occurred. It does say that he worked with auto body shops, where you guys come in, Um, but he mostly did like insurance stuff too. Oh. I couldn't find anything about like why he was also doing Uber at the time, but he said it said he only started like two weeks before this happened. So I don't know, maybe oh. just like a little side hustle. Yeah. But I mean, everything else pretty much said he was still working as auto body tech or insurance, or he jumped around to different things. Okay. So let's go back to when Matt jumped out of the car. So Jason, the Uber driver, then drove and waited nearly 45 minutes before calling his wife and asking her for the keys to her Chevy HHR. She told him she would meet him at her parents' house if he wanted the keys, which was like 10 miles away. So on his way, he went. But in between this time, he took another Uber ride request. Now, this is where things escalate a little bit. There was a lot of miscommunication with the person who requested the ride because it wasn't for the woman who requested it. It was for her boyfriend. And he was at an apartment complex and, and Jason was getting all confused because the directions didn't make sense, which I don't know if you guys ever have done. I do uh, DoorDash sometimes and getting around apartment complexes is the most frustrating thing in the world. I don't know if his app was messing up or what, but he was getting really pissed at the woman on the phone and he became really aggressive. Now, we don't know why he thought this, but he claims that he thought this woman who was walking by was the woman he was supposed to give the Uber ride to, but it was actually Tiana Carruthers, his first shooting victim. Now, Tiana was just walking with her five children at the apartment complex. She was taking her kids over to another person's apartment to play when an aggravated man in a Chevy began screaming incoherently at her. And next thing he knew, he was just firing shots. Like, she doesn't even know what was going on. But he first shot her arm, then she started to run away, and he shot both of her legs. The last bullet lodged into her liver. All she could do was just scream and get the kids to run away. And because of her actions, like, pushing the kids away and she shielded some of them, all the kids were unharmed, thankfully. Um, I mean, physically, they obviously, a lot of emotional, mental damage with that. But Right. The man finally drove away, and all she could think about was how she was going to make it. She was going to see her daughter go to her gymnastics class that night. That was what kind of helped her get through, and Tiana did survive. But as Tiana lay dying, Dalton drove off to meet his wife at her parents'. So now we're at about 6 o'clock. It's only been, it hasn't even been a full two hours since this started. And um, he told his wife, because remember his car was sideswiped, and he was asking her for her car. So he, the weirdest thing, he told his wife that an angry taxi driver sideswiped his car and shot at him because they were pissed that Uber drivers were taking their business. Right. <laughs> it's just like, okay. And I don't know if he, you can't tell what car's an Uber. 
when you're just driving. No. Unless there's some people who are weird and, like, put labels on their car. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I'd say that's weird, but, you know, yeah, Yeah. like, some people do that. It didn't say anywhere that he did, though. Oh. But apparently his wife bought it, um, at first at least. He told her that she could not leave with their children. He also told her to stay inside, do not go to work or school tomorrow, and she can watch the news to find out what's going to happen. Which is just, like... To me, and I don't want to blame the wife for anything, but why wouldn't you call the cops and say my husband's being weird? Because that's weird. That's an odd behavior. It's really weird. If she didn't expect it at all either. Yeah, and I mean, obviously she was kind of taken aback by that. If, if my husband told me someone shot at him and we were supposed to stay inside, and watch I'd be the like, news. Yeah, I'd be like, Lucas, let's call the cops. Like, right. You know what I mean? And I don't know. There's just a lot of instances where I wish someone... If you see something, say something. Because yeah. if, if some action would have been taken sooner, there would have been a lot less mm-hmm. harm. You know, don't want to blame anybody. But he left then, and he went back to their own house to grab another handgun. He loaded it. He um, had his wife Chevy HHR at this point, and it was about six forty-four when he stopped at an ATM, and then he just began taking Uber fares again. And mm-hmm. I just have to pause because I wrote Uber fairies. Oh, <laughs> how magical. I know, it's so sweet. So why wouldn't she even be alarmed when they he got another gun? She well, she was at her parents' house. Oh. He had She had him meet oh, her yeah, at her no, parents, okay, okay. and then he okay. drove home and got another gun. But she had to have known he had, I don't know, I just feel like she would have known he had a gun. I don't know. It's just a little weird. Um. Okay, so during this time, this is going to be about another two and a half hour time span before the next shooting occurs, but during that time, none of the passion- passengers from his Uber rides said he was unusual at all. Hmm. He said nothing alarming. They said he was even singing along with the radio and just being completely oh. normal and friendly and pleasant. So, which made me wonder, like, was he trying to have an alibi? Like, was he trying to get... Oh. Well, was he trying point. to get away with all these things? Or, like, yeah. was he... Because you'll find later, I don't mind saying this part, but he tries to plead... Um, insanity. So I don't know if he was trying to throw people off like he has like personality disorder or something. I don't know. But it was just weird. Like what was the rhyme or reason for the people you did shoot and the people who you just like gave a ride to? Yeah. It's just weird. So and I will mention again that the cops at this point are not looking for a Chevy HHR. They're looking for a Chevy Equinox. So even though that Oh, yeah. Even though that right. um, notification is out to look for that vehicle. And multiple people did call 911 on this vehicle because, remember, he was going 80 and 90 in residential areas. So they yeah. were getting calls, and it was on the news that there was an erratic driver. But it was a different vehicle. So it just completely slipped through the cracks. Okay, so at 10.01, the shooter arrived at a Kia dealership in Kalamazoo. This is where he would fatally shoot father and son Tyler and Richard Smith. And now, according to Tyler's girlfriend, who was in the backseat of Tyler's car, Delton just parked his car. That's Jason, by the way. I just noticed I switched his name. Jason Delton. Parked his car, approached her boyfriend and his father around 10.05, and asked them what they were looking at. Tyler was there to show his dad a bright blue truck that he wanted to buy for himself. This kid Mm -hmm. was only 18, a senior in high school, whole life ahead of him, really good kid, and he had been working really hard to buy a truck. So he was really excited to show his dad. Just before they could even say anything, Jason fired 18 rounds at them, fatally striking both males. So the girlfriend said he began walking towards the car, but luckily he turned away not seeing she was back there because she was trying to hide a hmm. little bit. And I like I can't even imagine how she feels no. witnessing all of that. She ended up, once he drove off, she got out of the car, got his phone, uh, Tyler's phone, and called 911. And there's restaurants across the street from this dealership, so people who were working at the restaurants also witnessed. And it's a busy road, too. Yeah. So a lot of people saw it. A lot of people called 911. And this is where the cops finally have the accurate, accurate description of the vehicle. Then, only about 10 minutes later, outside a Cracker cracker Barrel, um, also in Kalamazoo, only five miles away from the Kia dealership, four people seated inside two vehicles were killed and one other was wounded. Our four victims were Judy Brown, sister-in-laws Mary Jo Nye and Mary Lou Nye, and Barbara Hawthorne. So, these poor women, they're all about, like, in their 50s to 70s, and they were just out to see a show. I saw a couple different versions of what they were seeing but 
it was just like an acrobat show or something like that, just something fun. Mm -hmm. So they all went to a show and then they went out to dinner at Cracker Barrel and he killed all four of them while they were in their vehicle. And um, he, so what happened was Jason just went up to their van. So there were two vehicles, but he went up to the white van, asked, I'm pretty sure it was Barbara, asked Barbara a question and then he shot, he just shot her. Mm -hmm. And then he started shooting into the adjacent vehicle, which contained the other victims. The shooting only took about one minute before the gunman fled. And this one really killed me because there was a 14-year-old involved. And police actually didn't notice her at first because her, it's really her aunt, but she calls her her grandma, um, is Barbara. Mm -hmm. And Barbara pushed her to the floor to try to save her. So she was on the floor and the cops didn't notice her. And Barbara was a little coherent still. And she was able to tell them like, oh, my my granddaughter's in the back seat." And she stayed alive long enough just to give them Abby, which is the little girl, her emergency contact information. And then she passed away. Aww. Isn't that fucking horrible? That's so sad. So sad. A little bit about Abby. She was shot in the head. They took her to the ICU right away. And she was actually pronounced dead. And they started to take all the um, all the equipment off of her, the ventilator, all of it. And it was actually reported on the news that she did die. And the parents were saying their goodbyes and their mom, her mom had her head on her chest and just holding her hand and saying goodbye to her when all of a sudden she started to hear Abby's heartbeat. And she told the nurse and instantly everyone ran back in the room and she was alive oh. and she's doing well. I mean, she obviously has complications. She had to learn right. speech all over again, literally everything. And she has absolutely no memories of her childhood. Mm. And she said um, all she wanted to do was to be able to ride a bike again. Mm. Not horrible. I mean, it's amazing she's alive, but yeah. it's just, it's sad. It's just sad, even though he didn't take her life, how much he took away from her. So, and th this only took like five more minutes. So this is probably only around like 10, 20. Huh. So 10, 01 to 10, 20, all of this happened. So now police at this point are dealing with a serial killer um, and the search was being vamped up. After officers responding to the scene at the Kia dealership shooting heard reports of gunfire at Cracker Barrel, they realized there might be a mobile active shooter. So, because right now they only, only thought that it was um, someone just driving erratically. Because they actually didn't tie Tiana Carruthers to these shootings until later. Oh. They didn't tie it. And it's really unfortunate because the apartment complex that Tiana was shot at, there is a little bit of history with violent shootings and things happening there, it's no reason to... What's the word I'm looking for? Assume. Yeah, or just discard. Is that what I'm looking for? Just to kind of push it to the side. Just yeah. because there's been other things happening there. You right. know? So, But yeah. that's what they kind of did. They kind of... I don't want to say brushed it off, but I mean, they didn't associate the two together because, oh, this happens... You all know. the time there. Yeah, that's which is really frustrating. Yeah, so now they know they're dealing with an active shooter. And they, they learned he was driving the dark color Chevrolet HR, HHR. And um, using newly installed security footage from the Kia dealership, they put out a description of Jason Dalton over the radio. So now they have a little bit more to work with. Um, so they put out things on the Facebook page. It's all over the news that they're searching for this guy. They're pulling over every HHR they can find. And this manhunt went on for two more hours before finally peacefully ending when they pulled him over in downtown Kalamazoo. He was also taking Uber fares in between that time. So just killed six people and just went back on to do rides. Mostly with WMU students. So hmm. how scary is that? Ugh. So anyway, he, um, oh, and this is, this is crazy too. So he, at 12.04, he picked up three people and dropped them off at a dormitory on WMU campus. And the patient or the passengers later recalled that the driver wasn't overly friendly, but did nothing to alarm them. And they were actually joking with him and they were like, are you the shooter? And Jason was like, no. <laughs> and hmm. they just, he just dropped them off. And I don't know. That was just, ugh. that just gives me the creeps to yeah. imagine you were riding with that guy. Ugh. So... After the two hours of terror, at 12.40, a Kalamazoo deputy pulled Delton over in downtown Kalamazoo, still driving his black Chevy HHR and wearing a bulletproof vest. So police were a little worried at first that he was going to attempt suicide by police mm -hmm. um, because he wasn't putting his hands out of the window to show he didn't have a weapon. So yeah, but he finally did go peacefully. And like I said, it was all over the news. There were so many 911 calls, but finally it was over. And on the 22nd of February, he was 
arraigned on 16 charges, including six counts of murder, two counts of assault with intent to commit murder, and eight counts of using a firearm um, during the commission of a felony. So the court proceedings were a hot freaking mess because this guy was trying to claim he was insane and it took forever to actually do the testing Mm. for some reason and I couldn't find why but it was just a hot mess and during the actual trial he had a verbal outburst it interrupted Tiana Carruthers during her statement and Mm. it horrible I mean because she was just crying and inconsolable because this guy who freaking shot her was like screaming at her in the courtroom and he actually ended up being removed from the court and he could only participate via video hookup from the jail and this guy had the balls to say oh they're making a spectacle out of me because the news was all over this shit because it, it was a big deal yeah and it's like you you made a spectacle of yourself like he was just like oh the news are they're, they want to see my case and just see me. I'm like a, I'm like a, I can't remember what he said, but something like a circus attraction. Yeah. Obviously, he was not insane. And, oh, and the reason that he, he was saying he was insane, he said that the Uber app was controlling his mind. He said that Satan had taken over his Uber app and his screen was changing from red to black. And when it was red, that's when he was murdering people. But he didn't have any recollection okay. of the murders. Okay. So it's like, okay, so you're going you're gonna to blame an app. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, just complete bullshit. So they did the test and then they said they no, claimed that yeah, he wasn't. No, he's not insane. No, he, so he what, made it up. So what was it? They just thought. It just snapped. You snapped? Okay. Yeah, just snapped. Don't, they, they really don't know why. Hmm. Um, or they they might because he did have a confession, but his in his deal with pleading guilty, the confession will never be released. So oh. maybe he did say exactly what it was. Obviously, they must know what it exactly was if they switched yeah. it from insanity to just the guilty plea. So, but didn't yeah. he have financial issues? I didn't see anything about that, but that would make mm. sense. I thought he was having some personal struggle. He, well, they, they did say snap. he was, like, depressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, so. But, but that's odd because he told his wife he was going to yeah. do it. yeah. Or he did? Well, no. He said, watch it on the news. This Uber dude. Okay? Yeah. Okay. He said, watch the news. He so did. He knew that yes. he was going to do something. So that's not insane. That's a no. pre-planned. That's premeditated. Yep. And they said that, too, in the court because he went to a gun store with his friend earlier in the day hmm. and mm-hmm. bought all this shit. And he bought a jacket where it was easy to conceal a handgun in the jacket. But he had a vest on? Yeah, he also had a vest on. He had a bulletproof vest on. I wonder what the wife now they're divorced so oh. obviously she wasn't too supportive of it but but were they doing going through a divorce before he uh it said divorce afterwards it didn't say when she was trying to file but mm-hmm. maybe i wish i could find more but there wasn't that many articles about this guy except for yeah. like um local news stations my resources will be in the description but just local news stations doing a timeline of the actual shootings and usually i can find like What's the website? Like True Crime Wiki or something where they have more info on the person. Yeah. But just couldn't find anything. It's not like it's super recent, but... What um, year was this? 2016. But yeah. not a lot of people have covered it because I tried to find podcasts too and it just... Yeah, because that was the year... I do remember that because that was the year I graduated high school. Mm-hmm. I remember everyone was talking about yeah. it. Yeah. girl's still alive? She is. She's still alive. She's doing well. Um, The article I read said she was still in high school, but I feel like at this point she would be graduated. Because she was 14 in 2016. So probably graduated. And Mm -hmm. yeah, she's done some interviews and stuff too. There's a 2020 episode on the case that you guys can check out. But yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. After this happened too, I was so scared (laughs) to ride in Ubers. I remember that was like... That was one of the things that just freaked me out. I've never been in an Uber. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, Uh, Hannah had had to do an Uber. Oh. When she went to... Arkansas to see Spencer. Yeah. Sorry, Hannah Jim. Hannah is my sister. Yes. If you're like, who sister. is Hannah? Oh, Hannah. <laughs> Hannah, my daughter. She went to see her husband, Sergeant Vasquez. Ooh, oh. Sergeant. I don't even know if I say his last name. Right. I thought it was Vasquez. 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 No, it's Vasquez. What did I say? Vasquez. Vasquez. Hannah got a offer to lie down there, but she had to take an Uber. Yeah. And I made her send me 
mm-hmm. a picture of the Uber driver's information. Yeah. Because she said if he's sketchy, then at least they can call local authorities. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking, oh, I don't know. I'm that. pretty sure Uber apps now have, because at the time too, they did not have quick responses to mm-hmm. customers. They only had email. So Matt, oh. Matt Mellon, the first guy who was riding with him, tried to contact Uber and say, like, this dude's fucked. And he couldn't get a hold of anybody for, like, 24 hours or something. So I'm pretty yeah. sure Ubers now have, like, a panic button on the app. I'm pretty sure. They don't. They oh, should. that's a good idea. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure they do because there's been a lot of shit with Ubers. That freaks me out. And I have taken mm-hmm. a couple when I'm really drunk and I needed to. But not by myself. I've, I've always taken it with friends. You get drunk? I'm telling your mom. Do it. Mm-hmm. I get drunk with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to the casino. Drink. Not really. Wine coolers. Well, they're going to the cons- casino tonight. I think we should all go. You're mm-hmm. going? No, no, my mom. I'm gonna, have you ever been to one? No. I don't like them. Um, oh, your mom's going? Yeah. Oh, fun. They're kind of fun. It's just... Oh, I don't like them. I don't like losing a lot of money. That's where I'm, yeah. it doesn't sound fun to me. And but I'm not lucky, so. It's fun, though, when you do get lucky. You're like, wow, 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 when you're yeah. getting drunk. No, and they saying, have such good restaurants. At the one in Gull Lake, oh, my God. Mm. Gull Lake, not Gull Lake, Gun Lake. Gun Lake, oh, yeah. Oh, my God, the food at that place. And we were high, too. It's legal here, so. But we had edibles. I've heard a lot of people that like Gun Lake because yeah. the food. It, like, we were so hungry, so we were just like, <laughs> they had so much food. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> so, yeah, that was fun. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. I'm not a gambler. I'm, I partake. Yeah, I'm not really a gambler, but I'm not a big drinker either. I haven't found anything I really like, though. Mm-hmm. I, I like, like to drink. I like fruity things. Mm-hmm. She's like, I, she's like Corona beer Oh, no, stuff. I like dark beers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. So Can't do that. Gross. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Mm-hmm. That's like my husband. Mm-hmm. He likes, well, he's not like that hipster type who likes like IPAs or whatever, oh, or, but yeah. I don't know. No, 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 no. But he's a beer drinker. Mm. Well, I like, like beer. fancier I like wine. beer. I like mixed yeah. drinks. I, I love I wine. Love Wine's my jam. But I only need I like, a couple. Me too. Which I think because I got an extra large pizza body mm. that like I could hold a lot, but I can't. Mm. Like I we went to Ashley Furniture to buy new couches the other week. They give you alcohol okay. while you shop. I'm really? Like, you should. So I had two, or I had two little cups of wine, and I was like, <laughs> Ash and Frencher, load it up. That's oh, all no. they get you. 2000 no, over my budget. Let's go. <laughs> I can hold my own. Yeah. I can pound them back, but I don't. I yeah. don't drink very, I'm a social drinker. Yeah, me too. I'm mm-hmm. in a social environment. Yeah. Not when I'm home. No, I don't really drink by my, I mean, sometimes mm-hmm. I will with my husband if we're just, we want to hang out and, I don't know, but we don't get, like, drunk drunk no my husband is a dd yeah mm. oh yeah that'd be nice mm-hmm. my husband has a phobia of driving so he will never be that for me <laughs> and he likes to drink but yeah jordan's a like moscow mule person oh, oh my god, god i fucking those. love oh, those, those good. god anything with ginger ale mm-hmm. hit me up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a palaclancher oh my gosh we need to go <laughs> we need to go bar hopping in grand rapids yeah, Matt, mm-hmm. he'll be the designated team. Emma Grace didn't have a naughty period or like a party period. None of my mm-hmm. kids did. No, no I mean, else. you're not missing much with a, like a party stage because mm-hmm. I feel like I could skip that. But I love to have a good part. Like I love to throw the parties. Mm. Like we just had a friends miss a little while ago mm-hmm. and just played beer pong in the garage and just made. Well, I didn't make food. No, we ordered a bunch of Taco Bell. I mm-hmm. ordered like seventy dollars worth of Taco Bell mm. and uh, got drunk and it was fun. See. Here's the thing. I don't mind people over at my house. Yeah. They have a time limit. Oh, Like an sure. hour. Oh, yeah. If I 30 minutes over, is like the best. Oh, yeah. I don't want them gone. I agree. Because I'm like done by, if I have a party, I'm done by 9 o'clock or 9.30. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to bed. I have kids. I can't. Mm-hmm. But no, when your kids were younger, we had parties. We had people come to the house. And yeah. So did my parents. Party. Yeah. No, we did. We, yeah. we would have like um, everybody over for... New Year's. New Year's, yeah. yeah. Or we had Minute for Win at party parties and that kind of thing. And I was really fun. Yeah. I did. We played spoons and we had fun. Mm-hmm. And the kids just did their own thing. They were yeah. whatever level of the house they were in and we were on the main floor. And But it was always like my, I think Zach never did really have a time when he crashed. But Hannah mm-hmm. and Emma, mm-hmm. 8 o'clock, you know, it was 8 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still now. What, what time do you go to bed, Emma? 
like 8 30 that's me now yeah. though yeah yeah. yeah, I just and I don't always go to bed, but I just want to lay down. Yeah, and then it's we have like time. family movie mm-hmm. night. They'd be sleeping. That's nice. I hope my kids are like that. I don't think they will be, but yeah, <laughs> well, I Hannah, love that. Hannah's always out. You oh yeah, o'clock, Hannah. Yeah, she she always was out. But Emma, yeah. she'd get sick if she didn't get to bed on time. Mm-hmm. I'm throw up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was her birthday party. <laughs> And she wanted everybody to go home. She only had one where she invited friends, and then the other year she actually could because yeah. we had like milestone birthdays. So one mm-hmm. in three was family, and then five years you can invite five friends. Ten years you can invite ten friends. Yeah, she didn't make it that five. She had a five year one. I think we did the ten year one. I did the ten year one. Museum. Yeah. Ooh, which is going to be my story when I <laughs> when I get a chance when I get a turn when I get a turn when I get a turn and get a microphone because they won't give me a microphone. But I have a story about the museum. Yeah. And that was one of Emma's last mm-hmm. birthdays. And then she'd say, I just want to celebrate with my family. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, but I we don't like so hanging fun. out with people either. We were fun. Yeah. yeah. I'm family. just a home. But I feel person. like you also have yeah. anxiety like I do. Yeah. And when you have, <laughs> and I'm also, I don't know if, I feel like you're not really extroverted, but you are social. Like you're, you do a yeah. lot of things. I'm very extroverted introvert is what I call it. Like, once mm. I hit my limit, leave me alone. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go to bed. I want to be quiet. I don't want to be around people. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I feel like that's the best way to be. Mm-hmm. And I really married someone who's likes to stay home more than yes. I do. He seems very introverted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's just. But that's what happened with me. Just look at your dad. Goes to yeah. work and comes home. Yeah. We Plus need a balance. Dad. Yeah. We need a balance. And so. we don't have that balance. We're very much like, oh, we don't yeah. have to leave for two weeks. Got it. That's, yeah, well, that's kind of true. We, how do we even get on that subject? I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll just have a little chat. Hope mm-hmm. you guys liked your little chat. Let us know. Do you like to go out and drink? Or do you like to go to bed at 8? Or do you like both? <laughs> I like to drink by 7 and be in bed by 8. Do you like light beers or dark beers? Do you like dark beers? I, beers? Really dark. I like just beers? hate all wine I hate all beer. I like oh, wine. No, 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 yeah. No. I like wine and I like fruity drinks. Definitely. Yes, I was say. So she likes beer. Yeah. But she also drinks black coffee. But any like oh. frappes or anything like that. No. no, you're not she like a those. girly drink kind of person. Mm-hmm. No, I so any like is. flavored coffee. Yeah, yeah, my dad is. My dad loves a frappe. <laughs> he makes them all the time. I can't see I a map. It started off as my dad like those little Starbucks little drinks. Yeah, they can get the made. gas station. Yeah. yeah, and then he went to McDonald's. Oh, had fell in love with them. That was his only source and of happiness. They're the most sugary. He, well, yummy. he has thyroid, so he wasn't yeah. always very happy. <laughs> And then he found, then he found frappes. Oh. Not his family or anything like that. It was frappes that really healed his heart. I understand. And Definitely. then he started making them his himself. Like awesome. he has this whole like test. It. It's a whole big thing. It. We have a production. Frappe yeah. production. Frappe production. And if he gets like mug shots or any Big B, he loves Big B. Yeah. And like he'll go on the two for one. Days so you can Bogo have it. Days. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now sometimes if like if I give him a big B one, he's like, oh, six dollars so expensive, and mm-hmm. they are very expensive they for are. coffee. And sometimes if he makes his home, he's like, oh, it doesn't taste the same. Like he gets <laughs> upset about his home frapping. <laughs> And I'm like, you're missing like five ingredients. He doesn't I even understand. do like. I because I was the same way before. I stopped drinking coffees because mm-hmm. I don't really. I still drink it a lot but I just do decaf and I'll just go order it mm-hmm. but I Lucas bought me like a $200 coffee maker mm-hmm. and like all these different things to make a coffee and I'd make it and be like this doesn't taste as good let's go get Starbucks <laughs> it doesn't have the same you need to have someone else make it for you It it's you just like a sandwich mm-hmm. someone could make me at home or I could make at home the exact same sandwich I'd get at Subway yeah doesn't taste as good because I made it mm-hmm. it's better when someone else makes me something yeah and I'm a good made. I'm a good cook what is What's that? that? Eh, it's a wire. It's one of these things. <laughs> okay, this is what she does because we bore her. Yeah, <laughs> earlier she sat down here, we're getting ready and doing, trying to do like my test and stuff. She goes, I have gum. <laughs> she, was like, she just ran away. I have gum. That's how she said. Well, in case anybody wanted to come Well, and then it says my breath me. bad. I said I'd share. Do you think people want us chewing gum while we're talking on a podcast? I didn't yeah. think about that. I don't <laughs> even, I'm not even a gum chewer. No, well, she's I obnoxious. Gum, I don't like I when do. she... I snap. Yeah. I snap, too. She makes too many noises. So mm-hmm. Like... 
Oh, like you yeah. make it snap, or like oh, you just yeah. Yeah. That's what I do, yeah. Cut the Clench. episode, that's the end. Clench. Oh, that's so crazy. That's all, folks. We'll, we'll see you next time. <laughs> no. I'm going to part break here.